So I believe I've covered for the most part what works and what doesn't. Um, I think I'll mention some videos which are pretty good to use, and I'll also discuss a little bit about Sketchy. So, three resources which I want to illustrate as being fairly representative of what works and what doesn't and what's good for one thing or for another. I'll begin with Dirty USMLE. So, what's good about it is, is that, I mean, I, I suppose I should first start with a negative. As he himself has even, you know, mentioned, the, the fellow who does this, basically, more or less, most of his videos at least have one spelling error in them. Not a big deal. Also, most of his videos, usually there'll may maybe be one point of errata in it. As he said, he's basically commented that basically you know, all resources have errata, which is basically true. Um, most of the things I'm going to mention here, I will tell you, you have to make sure that there is no error on the video, and there's a very easy way to do so. Scroll down to the comment section, because most of the time, the person who's posted it, or the people who watch it, um, will have made the correction. So don't worry about that too much. Just scroll down and first look at the comments, then watch the video. Now, his value isn't so much the dirty mnemonics he makes. But his value is, is that he's actually able to very succinctly give summaries of these of these various issues, of these various topics, which is very nice. So he's a great introduction to a lot of these, whether you're first learning this or whether you're beginning your uh, dedicated. There's a, a second point which is quite valuable about him. It's the confidence he sort of instills into his listener. He makes you think that this is just such an easy task and you don't even need to worry about it. That's a little bit false confidence in that what you learn from these summaries is not actually probably sufficient for a person to do particularly well on the exams, but as he said, it's just basically a basis for you to start studying from that point. So, viewed from that perspective, it's a really excellent resource and I would thoroughly recommend it. So, the second one the second one is L.Y. Med, so perhaps Lee Med, I don't know, L.Y. Med. Um, this is an Asian fellow who put out a video, for example, as to how he thought people should use the, um, you know, the resource of UWorld. Anyway, he has occasional errata, like I'd probably say every few videos there's an error in it. Um, but what's great about him is, is that He's thorough without being lengthy. It will basically take you one to do one to two days to go through any given section like cardiology, uh, watching him. So it's a great resource if you're just learning the stuff, like pre-dedicated or for dedicated as a review. Um, with most of these things, uh, you might ask how quickly should you watch them because you know you usually don't watch things at normal speed in medical school I would say watch it however quickly you're able to so long as that you find you are able to process the information and don't find yourself frequently clicking back if you find yourself frequently clicking back to catch something you've missed you probably need to slow down the video anyway so He's pretty good. He also, he can be confident at times, he can be funny at times, so pretty entertaining fellow to watch. Uh, I would recommend him as a resource. Now, on the other extreme end of the spectrum of Dirty USMLE is a person called Amir Mulik, A-M-I-R, and then M-U-L-L-I-C-K. He is very thorough, but unfortunately rather time inefficient. What he does is he basically like posts his live streams with his subscribers or something and he'll go through meticulously the text and you know quiz people with practice questions etc things like that he'll explain all this detail and so that might be really good if it's your first time going through like the material like if you're just learning it in medical school however if it is your dedicated you really don't have time for something that this is that's this time inefficient I don't know if he has really much by way of errata, so I think he's rather good in that respect, but it's just, it's going to take you a comparatively long amount of time even watching it very quickly, so I can't really recommend it quite 
for that. If you have some time to spare, he's a fine resource, though. Um, basically, I, I want to uh, also mention some things about Sketchy. Sketchy is great for memory palaces, and you actually end up learning a lot in the, along the way. Sketchy Micro is comparatively long-winded. It's just because there's much less detail, you're able to watch any of the, vi the videos able to be much smaller, and you're able to watch them sped up. For the most part, you probably want to watch the videos because in Sketchy Micro, sometimes they have information where um, they don't tell you it in the card. They actually say it in the course of the exposition verbally, so that's a bit of an issue. Sketchy Farm is pretty good. Perhaps not quite as perfect as Sketchy Micro. Sketchy Path is not as bad as people say, but honestly, it kind of sucks in some sections. A lot of them, though, are fairly decent, and you can learn fairly well using it. And most importantly, it gives you memory palaces, which are almost folders, if you will, into which you can store information and allows you to readily access it when you're thinking about stuff, rather than everything being lost in a pile of papers, so to speak. There's also something called Pikmonix, and Pikmonix, I would almost say, should be ashamed of itself. Um, the graphics are not good at all. And because of that, everything is so indistinct and so absurd that you don't really remember it as well. And rather than having thoughtful mnemonics for the most part, it's they take the very syllables of a word and they make a mnemonic, uh, a verbal mnemonic out of it. But it's not really quite good. It's not distinct. The method leads to and promotes a sort of degree of indistinctness. And it's not well organized like Sketchy is. Like if, if you can analyze things well, you can figure out pretty well what Sketchy is doing with all of its arrangements of stuff. You can see hidden patterns underneath it. That does not quite exist to the same extent in Picmonics. I still recommend subscribing to them though, because Picmonics has some anatomy and it has some biochemistry, wherein Sketchy doesn't have these. So some of their stuff is good for this, some of it is not so good. Like for example, I wouldn't particularly bother with their glycolysis, but their um, uric acid cycle is pretty good. It's decent. Um, some of their references are kind of dated, but I don't think that will particularly hurt anyone. I mean, I got all of them. Um, yeah. That's about it with in regards to that. I basically don't recommend you go through pick my, uh, sorry, um, sketches like multiple too many times. Twice would be more than sufficient. Um, basically, the way you remember it is just by thinking about it when you happen to be reading a resource, you know, like first aid. Um, they also now have questions that accompany it. I actually spent a few weeks to go through all like 2,000 of them. I don't really particularly recommend it as being useful. But when you're actually first learning them, I do believe it would probably be useful then to go and do the accompanying questions. Just because it ends up showing you particular parts of the, of the um, cards repeatedly, and it helps cement it. So for that, it probably is, is useful enough. Um, so to quickly mention about a few things. There's the issue of eye strain, which you may face. And when you're dealing with the test, I mean, when you're dealing with UWorld, you can, you can click on the sort of inverse palette option. So when you do that, it helps to cut down on the strain. But at the same time, you're still going to be experiencing it. What to do for the test itself? Well, rather, what to do when you're studying. I could say when you're studying for first aid, what you should do is, is if you feel like you're, you know, having to really push yourself through the text, stop doing that and go and watch a video that will, you know, help to help you study there uh, through that. However, once you get into this uh, process efficiently and once you know the material well enough, you're going to find that there's no longer particularly a point of um, watching videos because they'll just feel long-winded and it won't really feel efficient. At that point, I recommend just closing your eyes, lying back, and doing so for maybe 10 minutes to a half an hour, no longer than a half an hour, or you might get up and get something. I know it feels like this is a waste of time and you'll probably be really into studying at this point, but trust me, this is the most efficient way of preserving your eyes, uh, stamina, and of keeping sharp on things. It really does help, so occasionally think about doing it. Um, 
when you're actually in the test, there are a few things which are going to help you out, and I'm going to teach you them. Um, this is basically something that more or less I figured out. When you're taking the test, cover one of your eyes. Cover it so that you are not putting pressure upon it. Rather, you're just sealing it off, if you will. But your hand is close enough to your eye so you can feel the heat of it. Close your eye, obviously. Not only does this allow it to rest, but it allows almost an action like a hot pad upon it. It allows it to open up, allows the vasculature to, you know, open up, the blood to flow through, etc., the muscles to relax, whatever. If you put too much pressure upon it, unfortunately, you end up causing a situation where when you open that eye, you're no longer able to see with perfect acuity for a little bit. And that's counterproductive, obviously. So what you do is for like one question, you'll answer it using like this, you know, you'll have one eye covered and you'll be using the mouse because that's all you really need to do. Then from the next one, you switch over covering it like this, etc. And you alternate like that. And if you do that for the most part, you can actually go through the test without feeling much by way of eye strain. But they do allow you to bring some eye drops. And I should remember to show you a good brand, but basically, um, just get an anti-inflammatory eye drop and put it in. Roughly halfway through the um, exam is when I'd recommend it. Um, I, I strongly recommend you practice using eye drops or any product you use at least days before you start the exam because you want to know how your body reacts to it. Um, I also recommend not to actually look at any electronics. Well, let me rephrase that. Don't do any UWorld a day at least before the exam, maybe two, because you, you don't want to strain your eyes. Instead, just look at the book, look at first aid. As I said, when you're getting ready to take the exam, you should be so familiar with this that you can go through first aid in one to two days. And if someone asks you anything, it should just kind of more or less spit back. <laughs> you don't need to know everything. Um, I'm not going to say that, but that's the level of familiarity you should have. You should be at least be roughly familiar with everything you see in first aid. Um, so as to how you manage the actual test experience, a little secret for me in taking tests is to take, um, is to have kidney beans, which you prepare, you let stand in water the day before so that basically it doesn't cause any flatus or anything like that. Um, it's high in various calmative amino acids like, you know, taurin and lysine, so it helps to calm you down and helps to have a long, stable source of energy. However, that is not what I actually did on my step exam. I, I had prepared um, oatmeal, for example. I actually had little canisters, just Tupperware. Things which are sufficient to hold a gulp size of like anything. So I had oatmeal, and I, I, I figured it's better to be overprepared than underprepared. So I had oatmeal. I had, um, I think I had the insides of some microwavable, microwave burritos. I had this and that. But what I, you know, for long-term responsible energy, but what I actually did was I'd have like two to four grapes uh, between each, uh, each test and I'd have like two chocolate bars, chocolate squares, again, between each break. And that's what I do. You see, the thought that I had, which was a very good one, was to minimize the amount of water I drank on that day. And because of that, I didn't really need to get distracted by using a urinal. Having said that, I do recommend you more or less take every single break you can and you just go and quickly use the urinal. Because if nothing else, it gives your eyes break from the strain. And you don't want to be distracted by having to use the urinal when you're in the middle of the test. I know you can, like, you know, hold it or whatever. But again, on this important date, why, you know? <laughs> don't let yourself be distracted. So just go up and quickly use the urinal. Um, in order to facilitate this as being realistic, I recommend you end the test with around one minute remaining or so. Don't use up the entirety of your time. If you know the stuff, you know the stuff. Go quickly, look through anything you absolutely need to. But basically, try to make sure you end with one minute extra or so. That will be added to your time. So you will be able to help pay for some of your breaks by ending things a little earlier. So having grapes was very smart. Everything I put into there was specifically designed so that I wouldn't need to chew it, really. I mean, it's nothing particularly, like, nutty or anything. I wouldn't need to chew it. I would be able to eat it very quickly. I, in fact, 
kept a stopwatch with me, which I timed myself to practice uh, when I was practicing taking the, uh, the exam. I did not actually use that for the exam itself, though, even though I think I brought it with me. Um, I would basically go and eat a few grapes to be hydrated. I'd go and um, eat some chocolate to give myself energy. And you, you might think you'd crash with something like that, but when you just have a few pieces of chocolate, you know, like every, I don't know, 40 minutes or whatever, it actually kind of just keeps your energy spread out fairly well throughout the day. I actually took it in the afternoon, by the way, so. Um, and what I did is a bit of a secret weapon, and I'd have a swig of water or something like that. What I did was a bit of a secret weapon. I had made sure I had prepared before and the day before, I took all this grapefruit and I plucked out the inside of it. I meticulously prepared it so it didn't have any like pulp or anything. It was just the innards of the grapefruit. Now the cool thing about grapefruit, and um, this is again a technique of mine, which I've used since the days of the MCAT studying for it, it has a compound in it, I don't remember what, which essentially as I recall goes and takes cortisol and prevents it from being inactivated in, I think it was the kidney or something like that. Well, the, the long and the short of it basically is, is it acts as more or less a natural stimulant by preventing the breakdown or inactivation of cortisol. Very good. Very good idea. I kept plenty of it, actually. And I waited until, like, the latter half of the test when I was beginning to crash. And I did something very clever. I went and ate it. And then as a result of that, I mean, I had one of the Tupperware containers of it. I actually woke up again. And the next break, I, I had a, a half of a container, I think. So I kept, like, I kept enough so that I, I could have... <laughs> I made sure I, I overpacked. I kept enough so that in between each break, if I had eaten my full complement of whatever, I'd be fine. But anyway, I ate then half of a container, and I happened to say from that point, I ate one Tupperware container in one break, and the next I ate half of one. And I'd say I had no further problem with any wariness. It actually woke me up well and stimulated me well, and I was fine. Very good secret technique there, and I give it to you. So, use grapefruit, seriously. And if you take out all the pulp, etc., you won't have to be bothered with chewing or with using, you know, liquid to swallow it or anything like that. Just make sure you know how it affects you beforehand. So practice with this beforehand, you know, a few days before at least. Having said that, I actually found the test to be incredibly easy. So, don't panic over this. It's really not I mean, it's like eight or nine hours long, but it's really not as bad as you think it is. I actually exited the testing center, well, in the room. I twirled about and blew a kiss to each one of the uh, female uh, proctors. <laughs> so uh, I sang as I exited the, the um, testing center itself. So I happened to think that I had a, a pretty good experience all in all. Uh, it was a very long one, but I think I did fine. And if you follow my advice, I will say you yourself, I think, will also do fine. Now, I, I want to stress this one point. Everyone tells you to do the exact same thing, right? Two times time, uh, through UWorld, two times through first aid. But despite everyone doing the same thing, you can actually see wide differences in scores. So frankly, no, a method does not assure you of getting a particular score. But I do think that my methods will actually, and my way of actually analyzing stuff, instead of just doing it automatically, will make sure that you use your time efficiently, and that for a given time and a given effort and a given amount of talent, you will probably score higher than if you had just done by rote what everyone else tells you to do.